So this is Blue. He doesn't want to be on camera. He's very shy and he doesn't want to be accosted on the street because, you know, being famous is tricky for a dog. Um, he's not famous yet, but you never know. Um, he's a lurcher. He's half Bellington and half Whippet. And he is the sweetest dog in the entire world unless you're a cat, uh, at which point he'll chase you and maybe do worse, or possibly a fox or a rabbit. So he likes chasing things. Um, but aside from that, he's a very good dog. Um, Juno. This is Blue's sister, Juno. Um, and I always love it when kids say to me, are they brother and sister? And I say, yes, they were in the same litter. They had five other brothers and sisters too. Um, and she is, she was the smallest one in the litter. He was the biggest. And she's obviously also a Beddington Whippet. <clears throat> she's a little bit of a, neurotic thing. She thinks she should be running the world. So when you drive in the car with her, she looks at the windscreen. She never relaxes, even if it's like a five hour journey, because she feels that she's really the one who's driving. So she's not, she doesn't have a relaxing life where he is very chill. Oh, they're gone. Well, I had this idea. I wrote a book for adults called um, Jonathan Unleashed. And it was kind of about having dogs and having the dogs in a funny way sort your life out for you. And I thought a lot about how dogs sort people's lives out. Um, for one thing, they get you up in the morning. I mean, I'm a writer. I would stay in bed until I'd certainly be in my pajamas at one in the afternoon if I didn't have a reason to get up. But I have to get up every morning at eight o'clock because they want to go out for a walk. So dogs kind of regulate your life. And I sort of thought in a way, that's a really important part of having a pet. So the question is, do you have the pet or does the pet have you? And there's always talk about rescue dogs, that rescue dogs, my rescue dog rescued me. Um, and so I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if you had a dog who reluctantly adopts a family? What he really wants is a nice, well-trained, sensible family. And what he gets is this chaotic, sort of bad-tempered family that needs tons of training. Um, and it just made a really good premise for a book. And of course, there's one child who is well-trained and does understand him. Um, and that's where, the, that's where the stories came from. I think everybody thinks that writing short books is easier than writing long books. But in fact, it's really no different at all. You still need a really good kind of story arc. And I was thinking about my father, strangely. And my father, when I was a child, decided that he was going to start cooking. So he started making his own spaghetti. We got him a spaghetti maker. And he started making sourdough bread years and years before, you know, anybody decided that they had to have sourdough bread every morning for breakfast. And my poor father, we really um, made fun of him terribly because his sourdough bread was unbelievably heavy and uh, nobody could ever eat it. And so I started thinking about Papici. He's going to be the one who starts to cook and that all his cooking goes horribly, horribly wrong. Um, and of course, once you start talking about baking and cooking, you get to kind of bake off type scenarios. So I thought, wouldn't it be funny if he entered a local bake off competition? And of course, because he's a little bit grandiose, he decided he's going to make uh, not a, a barn or a ship or, you know, something fairly simple. He decides he's going to make the Palace of Versailles uh, in France out of gingerbread. And just the thought of that made me laugh. And of course, McTavish has to sort of save him from humiliation and despair, which he does. Well, uh, my, my dogs are lurchers. And apparently the name Lurch, uh, it's controversial, but it apparently Lur or Lurch comes from Hungarian and means thief. And I, my dogs, I had them since they were puppies, but very often they get rescued. I went to, uh, to get a rescue lurcher from a farm up in Nottingham with a friend, and she 
was appalled. She didn't want to take it home and because it looked really awful. And the her daughter and my daughter were in the back seat of the car going, Mommy, we can't leave him here. And um, her name was Millie. And she the first thing she did was she leapt into the car and ate all the sandwiches I'd made for all four of us. And apparently, um, she was what they call a counter surfer. And she would get up on the work surfaces and just wander around looking for nice things to eat and after a while she stopped but they are amazing jumpers and um, they can jump from a standing star up onto a, a kitchen counter it's one of their really good skills but mine mine are not thieves mine are quite well behaved if you left a sandwich on a low table for half an hour it would be okay but if you left it overnight it would be gone in the morning as usual, it's not the dogs who are badly behaved, it's the humans who are badly behaved. So if, you, if you're sensible and you don't ever give your dogs treats at the table, uh, then your dogs won't beg for treats at the table. My husband always shouts at me because I get him and he's got such a sweet face and he comes and he stares at me like he hasn't eaten in months. And sometimes I think maybe we've forgotten to feed him for months and so maybe I should just give him a little taste of this pork chop. Uh, so um, unfortunately I've turned him into a beggar but it's my fault not his. I definitely think my dogs have rescued me. Um, I've always been a dog person. When I was a kid I desperately desperately wanted a dog. Um, and because there were four of us in, in a very short period of time, my parents thought life is complicated enough already. We don't need a dog. So I came up with a plan that I would act insane and that my parents would then take me to a psychiatrist and that the psychiatrist would say, what's wrong with you, little girl? And I would say, I need a dog. And I, this was a really well thought out plan. I must have been about eight or nine when I came up with this plan. Um, but my parents weren't idiots and they unfortunately didn't take me to a psychiatrist. But the irony is, years later, my daughter had terrible trouble sleeping and um, we took her to a child psychologist who said, um, what you need to do is get her a dog. And I thought, finally, somebody, a sensible person. So we went out and we got two puppies in a, in a box and she was absolutely thrilled for about two weeks and then they became my dogs, as always happens, I think. Um, and they have crawled into most of my books. And it's interesting, um, uh, one of my editors has said that she's just waiting for someone to do a PhD thesis on you know, dogs, in Meg, the place of dogs in Meg Rosoff books. But I sort of see them as kind of alter egos. Um, to humans and you know you anyone who has a dog knows that you project things on them all the time my mother when she was in her 80s got herself her first dog and you would go into her uh, apartment and her dog would be lying flat out on the white couch her black you know dirty dog lying on the white couch and my mother would say he knows he's not supposed to do that <laughs> and you go well no, he doesn't know that. He knows he's allowed to do that. <laughs> um, so it's that projecting of kind of human things. And actually, they, they, they pick up a lot on their humans. I think if you have a nice, calm, happy family, then the dogs are calm and happy. And if you have a chaotic, crazy family, then unless you're McTavish, you tend to have a, a, a crazy, chaotic dog. Um, but yeah, they organize me. Four o'clock in the afternoon is the walk that I hate doing because I usually start writing in the afternoon and I'm just, you know, kind of getting into my pace and there are these two little furry faces looking over the side of my desk, staring at me, sort of looking at their watches. And um, I don't really want to go out. But then once I'm out, i am it's a really good way to think, walking a dog. It's just the best place to think. I often solve problems with my plots and, you know. Um, so, yeah, they totally organize my life. They get me out of bed. They get me walking. I get exercise. And they, you know, 
you can get on with a dog even if you can't get on with your friends or your family or whatever, you know? I, I always say that your dog will love you when no one else does. And sometimes writers are really unlovable because when things are going badly, I'm in a terrible mood for weeks on end, but they don't mind. Or at least they don't tell me they mind. Well, when I was a kid, I was more into horse books and pony books because I so, you know, as well as wanting a dog, I wanted uh, a pony. The first dog book I think I ever read was a book that my father had um, called Bob's Son of Battle. But I loved all those books about, you know, Greyfriars Bobby and Lassie. And, um, and in fact, I, I went into a, a, a sort of swamp recently with a friend of mine because um, I was retrieving a, a big silver mylar balloon that had got stuck in there and it was marring the landscape. And um, I went in to get the balloon and I ended up almost up to my waist in mud. And my friend who wanted to get a dog, pointed, she said, she said, well, I expected the dogs to come up to you and, and you could grab onto their collars and they would pull you out of the mud. And I said, yeah, yeah, it happens in Lassie. It doesn't really happen in real life. But um, I always liked animal books. I mean, when my daughter was young, I, she, one of her favorite books was Anne Fine's Diary of a Killer Cat. Um, and Jeremy Strong did The 100 Mile an Hour Dog, so, yeah, which was, I mean, all those books are, I mean, anything, dogs, cats, horses, you name it. In a pinch, I'll read a book about a fish. Well, there is a real McTavish, and he's a golden uh, Scottish Terrier, which is a very rare thing. I'd never seen one before. And we had just moved to a new neighborhood, and anyone who's moved to a new neighborhood will know that the best way to get to know new friends is to go out walking with your dog, because dog owners all talk to other dog owners. Uh, it's a great way to find a boyfriend, I think, too, although I've never put that to the test because I've been married a long time. but. Um, so I met this dog and the woman said, McTavish, McTavish, come back. And I, for some reason, what, what is it, you know, in your brain that makes you think, oh my God, McTavish is just the funniest name for a dog. And I thought I need to write a book about McTavish. So I wrote a book and it, it was published and I showed it to McTavish's owner. The first one was called Good Dog McTavish, and she said, she said, but well, it's a very funny book, and I really enjoyed reading it, but the title is wrong. It should be Bad Dog McTavish, because McTavish had a little bit of a reputation of being a bit of a, a big man in the, in the dog park, even though he was a little dog. So, and then she used to tell me that um, all the other dog owners were jealous, that uh, McTavish had books about him, but their dogs didn't have books about them. So. I absolutely love the idea of reading dogs. And a lot of them are greyhounds, I think, aren't they? Because they're very dozy dogs. And my dogs are half whippet. And you can see they love more than anything just to sleep. And I, I read somewhere that the librarians tell the children that if the dog closes his eyes and maybe even snores a little bit, that that means that he's thinking very deeply about the reading that the child is doing. And I just, I nearly burst into tears. I thought, I think it's the most wonderful idea in the world because dogs are so unjudgmental. Um, this, you know, there's nothing nicer than reading a book to a dog. They're, they'll stay and listen to you. Um, I don't think they'll give you help if you're trying to figure out how to end it, if you're writing it, but, but I, I absolutely, I think dogs should be everywhere, but I mean, then I'm kind of prejudiced. I think dogs should be in hospitals and old people's homes and schools and, you know, look how calming they are.